Section 533 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics, Second Edition. Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. Um, applications of Ampere's Law. So, um, and you put that funny, I put it backwards. I think it's supposed to go this way. Bloop. Sorry, Ampere. I know you're long dead, but we still don't want to offend you in any way. So, we calculated that the, the curl, the divergence of B, first of all, is zero. The curl of B, however, is equal to mu naught times the uh, volume current at the point in question. Okay, and um, we can rewrite this in integral form. Let's draw a box around this. This is differential form of Ampere's law. And so, if we take the integral of cross B dot dA vector, right, over some surface, well, that's going to be the same as the integral of mu naught J vector dot dA vector on the same surface. Well, what's this? It's a Pi-Stokes theorem, so we get the integral uh, around the loop um, of V vector dot DL vector is equal to, well, what's this? This is the the um, the total current within that area that we're looking at. So that's uh, mu naught times the enclosed current. This is the integral form of Stokes theorem. They're equivalent. You can easily go from one to the other. Um, the the problem with Stokes theorem is it you don't know right ahead. So you take some arbitrary surface like this, and you calculate you know the the surface, and then you say, oh, that's equal to going around the loop. But which way do you go this way or do you go this way? And that's that depends on the right-handed rule. So obviously you're going to go the right direction um, using a vector pointing up this way. If a vector is pointing down, you're going to go the opposite direction. So that's the right-handed rule. Um, the interesting thing is that Gauss's law looks very similar. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of funny how you start with the, the Coulomb's law and you end up with Gauss's law. And in magnetostatics, you start with uh, Biot-Savart's law and they end up with Ampere's law. And um, so anyway, it's you know it's it's kind of interesting that math works that way and nature happens to mirror that. It's just, it's just a beautiful symmetry. Uh, next, we're going to cover all the examples uh, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and then we'll be done with this section and we'll go on to the next section. So thanks for your time. Take care. Bye.